Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host, Captain Ryan. Today's YouTube video is a subscriber submitted replay that comes to us from Storm Surge Alpha. Storm Surge is here in his Z-52, tier 10 German destroyer, underappreciated and definitely uh, undervalued, but also underpowered. It's definitely taken a big ol' hit from a lot of nerf bats over the last few months. Though, with the impending updates that are coming out, some of those nerfs are actually going to be reduced, so they're not going to be nearly as bad. One of the biggest problems right now with the ship is, of course, its gun firing bloom. And that is, when you fire the guns on this ship, your detection range goes from 6.4 to something like 16 kilometers, which is well beyond your gun firing range and even your torpedoes, and I think that's just a little ridiculous. Storm Surge is up here at the sea cap point, and most of his team is following along with him. Now, he's slowed way down. Can he get in the cap before he drifts out? Yes, he does manage to stay just inside the cap circle there. He fires off his torpedoes at an enemy turpets. Now, this is one of the best things about this ship. The Z-52 has excellent torpedo reload speeds. At tier 10, one minute, a little over a minute, and you've got lots of torpedoes. And he manages to take out that enemy turpets with all of his torpedoes, securing himself a nice fat first blood and a good chunk of damage early on in this game. The enemy team did capture the B-cap point briefly, but his team is contesting it. When played really well, this Z-52 can be played excellently as a torpedo boat. I've had a number of games in this ship where I've basically just done that. I've played solely and completely as nothing but a torpedo boat, and I've actually survived the battle having taken zero damage. Unfortunately, if you play the ship that way, you can effectively expect that you're going to need your teammates to help carry the match. You're not going to be able to do it all by yourself. Storm Surge is taking shots out here at an enemy cruiser who was low health, and he manages to secure the kill on him with his guns, but the cruiser leaves him a parting gifts and sets him on fire there right at the very end. But that's alright, damage control available, pops it, gets that fire put out, and eventually here his detection range will reduce. He pops his speed boost to try and get himself in a better position here to deal with the enemy team. Now, the enemy team does have two of the three cap points, but they are down one extra ship. They've lost a destroyer, a battleship, and a cruiser, while Storm Surge's team has only lost two destroyers. Of course, as I always say, the team that loses its destroyer advantage early on, generally speaking, tends to lose the battle, because those sneaky, stealthy boats and their torpedoes can get up on you, especially on a map like this and wreak havoc on your team. Playing ambush tactics or just torping from long range while you're busy trying to angle yourself against incoming fire from battleships. So looking at the situation, Storm Surge has decided that he's gonna go ahead and push up towards the B-cap point. At this particular moment, the B-cap point is the only cap that they're really in a position to take and given that the majority of the enemy team is currently huddled back behind A, it'd be a good choice. He catches an enemy destroyer out in the open who wasn't moving at all, just sitting there, stopped for whatever reason, and he took the opportunity to open up on him. Of course, that's gonna leave him detected, but if you can get shots off on an enemy destroyer and cause damage to him before you get close and engage, it's a good decision to make, and considering no one else has been targeting him, it's also a fairly good decision to make. Enemy Destroyer is hiding behind this island, Smart Destroyer player, using the islands available, 
to shield him from any potential fire, but of course he is so close that he's being spotted by other ships. And the question is, who's going to get around the island to finish him off? Friendly cruiser behind Storm Surge manages to land a nice, big, fat hit on this destroyer and does set him on fire, but Storm Surge comes around the side of the island and he's got his guns ready to go. Come on, who's going to get the kill? The cruiser almost manages to secure it. Is it going to be Storm Surge? It is. Storm Surge manages to secure his third kill in this matchup. And now... He and the rest of his team are in a position to take the B cap point. They're also in a ship's advantage at this point, as the enemy team is down on ships. They're not too far down on ships, but because they're down on ships and now they're losing a cap, this is going to leave Storm Surge's team with the advantage to hopefully, basically, take the points lead and give themselves a nice large pad of points should any unfortunate circumstances occur. And it's important to remember this when playing domination match games that killing ships is just as important as getting those bases captured so that if you do suddenly start losing ships like they have now and the enemy team's able to equal out the number of ships that you have, you don't end up sinking below the points value so that the enemy team just has to survive. Now, I've seen this time and time again where enemy teams have won solely on the fact that all they have to do is sink one more ship and not die and they live. Enemy battleship comes around that island up there and he is basically getting shot at by every single member of Storm Surge's team who is in a position to shoot at him. So he is of course on fire and of course he's got torpedoes out at him. Is he going to get hit by a torpedo there? He does take a torpedo. That's going to be from the friendly cruiser that crossed in front of Storm Surge. But you'll notice that the enemy team has managed to take out yet another ship on his team though Storm Surge's team manages to return the favor, and it looks like they might be about to take out this battleship. Storm Surge continues with the relentless rate of fire, and the rate of fire on the Z-52 is fantastic. I honestly compare it to the gearing because it's got that fast of a reload. Of course, the gearing's shells do go further if you spec it right. But I like the gun arcs on this ship. They're actually pretty good, as you can see there. He's just able to get those shots out there. And surprisingly enough, because of the way the islands are situated, he is actually firing undetected, which is even better. But it looks like Storm Surge is having a difficult time setting those fires, and it always seems to be the case. Personally, I have Demolitions Expert on this ship because it is so difficult to set those fires. Only his rear shots are getting out there, but unfortunately they're not able to connect on that battleship before he gets taken out by another ship. But looking at the situation now, their team's in a really bad situation. The enemy team has three destroyers left, while Storm Surge's team only has himself and the destroyer and that friendly cruiser, and that friendly cruiser is unfortunately not going to be playing very smartly. At this point, what he needs to do is come back up to the B cap point and help provide fire support for Storm Surge and let Storm Surge be a little bit forward of him and fish out those destroyers or any incoming torpedoes. And speaking of those sneaky destroyers, one of them has just popped up. The cruiser manages to take out the destroyer, but the destroyer takes out the cruiser with torpedoes. Enemy gearing pops up and he is full strength. Storm Surge is in a very bad situation as he is half strength against a full strength gearing and there is a Shimakaze up there as well. Here come the torpedoes and is he gonna meet his end? Oh my god, oh my god, holy shit he torpedo beats that. Wow. Pops his hydroacoustic so he can see the gearing, and now this is where the gearing is misplaying it massively, and this is one of the best advantages of the Z-52 with that German hydroacoustic search. He can just see this guy, and the gearing has a no 
recourse. He can't see him. He doesn't know where he's at other than based on the gunfire. He'd have to actually get close enough to detect him proximity-wise. The gearing's putting a lot of rounds into the smokescreen, but they're being ineffective. The Storm Surge is backing up and see how much he is wrecking him. Now, when you've got a broadside gearing like this, you can shoot armor piercing and do just as much damage without too many issues. Shimikaze is fired off a nice set of torpedoes here. Storm Surge is moving forward. He's going to put himself into this position here as those torpedoes pass by the island or run into the island. His torpedoes are available yet again, so who is he going to? to try and torpedo. That Shimakaze looks like he wants to come around this island. A Storm Surge is in the situation that his smokescreen is disappearing, and that is another big problem with these ships, is that their smokescreens just do not last that long. His Hydro is still active, so of course he sees the Shimakaze come around there. Can he get the torpedoes away? Come on, there's one set, there's two sets. But he's beached himself. Is the Shimikaze going to get another set off? Uh, nope. The Shimikaze meets his end with torpedoes. And now that Gearing, who had the unfortunateness of misplaying it earlier against the Z-52 in his smokescreen, has less health than our hero, Storm Surge. What is he going to do? Destroyer versus Destroyer. He comes out from behind the island. Storm Surge really only has to hit him just a few times. Come on. Get the kill in there. Come on. Almost so close. He does manage to secure his kill, and that is his Kraken Unleashed. Congratulations, Storm Surge, on showing us that the Z-52 can, in fact, carry against a full-strength gearing and a mostly full-strength Shimakaze at half health. Good job. Well played, sir. 118,000 damage, not the highest damage in the world, but five kills Kraken Unleashed, very close to a solo warrior, and I mean, honestly, I'd consider that a solo warrior in my own opinion. Top of the team for XP earned because of all of the damage done to the enemy destroyers, and of course that first blood as well. 2,000 base XP, no surprise there. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following my Facebook page. If you'd like to help support me and my channel grow, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. Any level of support will grant you access to some of my World of Warships replay files and screenshots early. Some of those will end up on YouTube later. But there are many good games that don't quite make the cut for YouTube, but are still excellent and enjoyable to watch. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see on my channel, you can do so by sending it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play World of Warships live, among other games such as Armored Warfare or possibly Ghost Recon in the future, you can do so by liking and following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.